Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to AfterBuzz TV Spotlight On. I am Tony Moore, and I'm joined by my lovely co-host, James Law Jr. And of course, as you guys know, Dish and Days always likes to bring to you past cast members from our favorite soap opera, Days of Our Lives, in celebration of its 50th anniversary. And today is no exception. We have the one and only Mr. Kyle Lauder, ex <laughs> Brady Black. What's up, guys? How's it going? <laughs> it's good. That's like a welcome. That welcome is always like a mouthful. I know. I'm always like, I feel like I feel like I have like diarrhea of the mouth. I'm just like, blah, 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 catch it, and then we're gonna move on. <laughs> and here's Kyle. Right. That that's the only thing that is missing. How are you, Kyle? I'm doing great, guys. Thanks really. for coming out. Yeah. Oh, it's great to be here. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for coming, and and it's all about you. So yes. we're we're just gonna only <laughs> chat about you. That's it. You and no one else. And it's no very uncomfortable else. subject. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Being an actor and all. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> I'm sure you'll do fine. You have us to guide you. Yes. Or yes, yes, yes. So um, let's travel back to a few moons <laughs> to ago. We <laughs> <laughs> just get at the time machine. <laughs> and, right. Teleport us back to that lovely time when you made your first appearance on Days. Oh my God. That was your first acting role, right? First thing ever. Um, wow. First thing ever. Yeah. My first. My first audition. My first professional job. My mm -hmm. first. Yeah. Everything. It was. Um, it's the reason why. Why Days is always going to be very special to me. I mean, I was. I was 19 years old. I had. I was at Syracuse University's drama department okay. at the time, and mm -hmm. um, I won't bore you with the details. But I just I wanted to, you know, go west. Yeah. Go west, young man. There's no such thing as boring us with details. No, we we want all the details. Yeah, uh, fans want it. They okay, want it. I'll see what yes. I can do. Um, <laughs> no, but I I, so I I packed up my my car and I drove cross country and and I got to L. A. and and um, long story short, I, I didn't. I mean, I was so green, so inexperienced. Like I said, I didn't have a resume to speak of. I didn't even, didn't even have an agent. Mm -hmm. And um, Days of Our Lives was just happening, happening to to look for a role that fit me physically to a T. Brady yeah. Black. Yeah. And um, I was able to to finagle an audition for the for the show. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, I think that it worked in my favor because I had was, I had no expectations. I was like, I mean, I kind of know what I'm doing, and I and I look like what they're looking for. So I'll just go in, and as long as I can put a sentence together, I think I <laughs> might be okay. Yeah. Um, and Ken Corday and the powers that were at the time gave me the opportunity of a lifetime and yeah. changed my life. The things so. you do at 19, the things you do when we're young, the, I know. the courage. I know. When you're right? younger, I would right? never do it again. You drove <laughs> <off> <laughs> I know. You drove well, country. 19 again. Right. <laughs> no, it's true. I, I, I just, I think. And that was the thing. I mean, I just think that that you know what the naivete is that the word mm -hmm. that I'm looking That's for. Where you just is. you know what you want, and and you don't think you just think about the upside of everything, right. you know, and or at least I did at yeah, the yeah. time. Um, but when I when I got on the show, it's the reason why I, I just I will forever love this show. Is is um, they provide again? I was so green and just so <laughs> inexperienced, and and everybody in in front of the camera, behind the camera, Ken Corday himself, everybody just provided such a a warm. Welcoming, supportive atmosphere for me. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, that show was and still is, forever was, just a well-oiled machine. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. and, and they don't care if you're new. I mean, they care, but but right. when you're new, you gotta, you know, yeah. you can't fall behind. And um, you know, the two names that come to mind are Drake Hogeston and Deidre Hall, just because I, I work yes. with them all the time. Yeah. When I first started, um, you were mean to them. You, yeah, yeah, you had yeah. to say some really mean stuff to Marlena. <laughs> I was hard. like, oh my god. Like, you should have seen some of those scenes. Like, you know, I would. You know, and it would end on me, and I'd, I would like say something to her and have to hold the face. Oh, yes. and then they'd yell at the I was just like, oh my god, I'm sorry. Oh my god. Just like hug yeah. you between tanks. I'm like, so it's okay, so it's okay. No, but actually, that's my point. Yeah. Because afterwards, I'd be like, huh. you know, and she'd be like, honey. You know, you're doing great. You know, um, but it was it was one of those things where I, again, th those two legendary icons, yes. Uh, yes. not just days, but of of you Period. know, with the entertainment world. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 
Um, they and I was shot out of a cannon when I first started there. I mean, I worked like all the time. And, yeah, uh, you were on a lot. Yes. And they just—I hate to be cliche about it, but they—they they really just took me under their wing and and, yeah. and gave me pearls of wisdom and advice and just made me feel like I belonged and, mm -hmm. and taught me everything and how to hit my mark and find my light and, and memorize mm -hmm. just the ridiculous amounts of dialogue Ooh. that you have to memorize. So there's pages and pages and pages, pages, and, pages and, um, and gave me the history of, of the show and the character and it was just, um, I'll never forget that. Yeah. And, and Days was actually quite literally my home away from home. I mean, our shooting schedule was, was very different back then. Yeah. We used to shoot very late at night. Oh, and then, oh yeah. okay. Um, now they have a hard out. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, we'd shoot until we end it. It didn't yeah. matter oh, what wow. time. And yeah. sometimes we had to be back early the next morning. And yeah. um, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't really have a lot of friends or anybody to go, <laughs> anybody <laughs> to go home to. I can go social life when I first right. moved there. Yeah. Um, so I'd, I'd literally sleep in my dressing room. I'd, I would just like finish work and just go down to my room and and just like pass out and then wake up early the next morning and, yeah. and do it all over again. And so again, it was all of those factors considered. Um, it made just a huge impression on yeah. my life. And it's one of those. I've been fortunate enough to to work on a lot of different things in my career over the past fifteen years, but. For some reason, well, for those reasons, I guess, Days is just really kind of, you know, stuck, you know, yeah, right here. Yeah. Well, we hear that often. Um, mm -hmm. We've had a, a couple of other past cast members come on, and they always re recount their first day and how certain people just took them under their wing and yeah. just kind of showed them the ropes. I think it's a, a, a testament to, to Ken Corday and, and Corday Productions and, and just everybody on that show. Mm -hmm. um, they really do. Everybody says this about their show <laughs> and entertainment, but it's like, <laughs> it's like a family. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It really is. It it really yep. is. People yeah. there are. We have so much. Uh, we had. I had when I was there. So much fun with everybody and the friendships and relationships that I had um, with people there. I still carry with me to this day. Yeah. Um, and that's again. That's a testament to the people on that show. Yeah. That people they show up and they do their job and they do it well. But there's also there's a camaraderie there and and a, and a chemistry that goes on. It's the reason why that show has been on for 50 years yeah. and, and still going strong. Was it overwhelming for you with like going into the soap genre and having because Fans, soap fans are very dedicated oh fans. God, so yeah. was that <laughs> once once you start appearing and, and like airing on the show, was it suddenly like a little overwhelming for you? Like very much so. Yeah. I think that the the fact that I was going on to such an iconic, legendary show was mm -hmm. was very um, was very intimidating to yeah. me. Um, it wasn't like this show that nobody had heard of, and and you know. <laughs> It was like you're you're going into this, like I said before, this well-oiled machine, this yeah. iconic machine. Um, so I was very nervous about that, you know. Um, and the fact that I, you know, never had a job before this as an actor. Um, so I was like, not only do I have to go to this, you know, iconic show, but I also have to deliver. I'm out of there faster than I was hired. Yeah. Um, and then not only that, but the recognizable faces, you know, two of them that I just mentioned, oh, yeah, wow. Deidre and Drake, and and then so many others. I mean, I, I could literally list the entire Cat. Right. Yeah, yeah. John Aniston. Um, I mean, all exactly, these. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Lauren Coslow and yes. uh, Peter Eckel and yeah. Christian Alfonso. Again, Ali Sweeney. The list goes yes. on and on. <laughs> yes. Forgive me if I'm forgetting your name. It's like <laughs> all of you. They get it. No, they get so it. yeah, I kind of walked in there going like, "Hey, <laughs> <laughs> you got I'm the new dude." Um, also, the fact that you know Brady was a character on that show. He was yeah. a, a little boy yes. at the time, so I was kind of playing a character that had a history on the show, yeah. and I'm like. You know, I'm, I'm creating the older version of this character, right. but mm -hmm. I also need to know the history of him. You know? Did you ever get a chance to work with, um, I think her name is Stacey Gleason, who played Isabella? Oh, it's was my your favorite storyline. Yeah, because she came back and there's a ghost to guide you, right? Yes. Yeah. You know, it, it was such a, a, a surreal experience for me because um, I. I did so much research when I when I started on that show, and I watched all the archives. Okay. Of, oh, okay. You know, okay. Of, of um, you know, That's John and mind. Marlena and John and Isabella, because and, yeah. and, um, I wanted to know about the history of this character and who his parents were and what they've been through and whatnot. And. Mm -hmm. And you know, just like John and Marlena, John and Isabella were a huge yes, they item were. as well on that yeah, show. Right. And, and yeah. I watched so many hours of, of tape with with John and Isabella, with Drake and, and Stacy, and mm -hmm. and um, you know how close. Uh, Brady and his mom were even when he, though he was a baby yeah. or whatnot, um, or just had the, not how close, but the, the love that was there, yeah. and how she just loved her son Brady so much, and it was such a trip 
to me when they they told a storyline where she kind of came back as a ghost to kind of guide Brady through a very difficult That's time. Right, mm-hmm. And I remember she came out, you know out on set, and I was just like, <laughs> "Mom, <laughs> Mom. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say." Um, we had such a wonderful time. Um, she really is so special, um, you know, to me personally and and then professionally. Aww, we good. worked very well together. So that was that was a trip and and a really enjoyable experience all at the same time. Aww, like that. Yeah. Now you also were not made for an Emmy it was, for yeah. your hard work for yeah. your leading actor that was in cool. 2003. Yeah, yeah, so how, did, how does it feel being nominated? How would, you know, where I, were you when you found out and how did it feel being nominated? It kind of goes back in, into that the category of what I was saying before about being shot out of a cannon. Everything was just, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't take it for granted. I'm so grateful, you know, for you know, I, everything just was happening so fast. You know, yeah. I just got in this show and then I'm meeting all these people and I'm involved in these big storylines and working with these legendary actors on the show and and, um, and then, you know, Emmy season comes around and boom, and I'm nominated. I was like, okay, cool. It wasn't really like <laughs> after the fact that I was, I, I, I think the moment was I was sitting in Radio City Music Hall when they used to have okay. it in New York yep. yeah, right. at Radio yes. City Music Hall. And... I mean, this is like it, the night of, you know. Even I did interviews, you know, pr- of course, to sure. talk about it yeah. leading up to this point yeah. and, and the whole thing. And I don't think it really sank in until I was I was sitting in Radio City Music Hall, and then that moment comes up where the, my category comes up, <laughs> yeah. and um, you know, they're like, fast, they're and then yeah, and then you know, the, up in the big screen. <laughs> The legendary Radio City Music Hall in New York City, and and I just walked the red carpet and the whole thing, and but I'm sitting in my seat, and and then you know my category comes up, yes. and it's like you know Kyle Lauder, and I just remember sitting there going like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like this this actually is happening, and then wow. it occurred to me that, and I mean this, I'm not kidding, I didn't yeah. plan. The speech, I think I was just kind of like, I knew, I don't want to lie about it, I, I knew kind of what I wanted to say, but <laughs> yeah. I didn't like write anything. Right, right. And then it occurred to me in that moment, I'm sitting in my seat, you know, the camera's right there, so when they call your name, they take a yeah. shot at you. Yeah. Right. And then it occurred to me in that moment, I was like, if I win this thing, I'm going to get up there, and I'm not going to have no, any yeah, idea. Yeah. <laughs> and I got so nervous about that. <laughs> and there was this kind of this moment where when they announced the other guy, it would. I mean this. There was kind of this moment of relief where I was like, "Okay, dude, good luck." <laughs> 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 I don't need you over here. It wasn't. It wasn't until like afterwards where right. it, where um, I was kind of like, "Oh man, that would have been cool to win it." But yeah. um, <laughs> what did they say? Just to be nominated. Just to be nominated, nominated, nominated is, yes. is, is more than enough. No, right? but it was. Um, yeah, it was f- great it was for an amazing story that yeah. I was nominated. I mean, they always gave me great story over there. Yeah. Do you remember which sexy what story exactly? Was it real? The um, uh, Chloe Nadia Bjorlund. Yeah. Uh, his character was uh, there's the whole leukemia yeah. <laughs> storyline, which is yeah. another one of my favorites that um, that I was involved in. Um, that 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 storyline for me um, probably was the most special because that that story kind of transcended the the genre, if you will. Yeah. Uh, you know, Days of Our Lives. We partnered with the Leukemia Lymphoma Society oh, during okay, that okay, time, okay. and we did the Light the Night Walk. And um, yeah. um, Nadia Bjorlin, um Unfortunately, had a personal connection with with you know her, she lost her father you know to oh, the okay, disease yeah. and whatnot and and um, so she was kind of spearheading you know when we did pu- personal appearances and public appearances for um, you know promotion to raise money you know for the society and also to promote the storyline that we had going on with the show but mm-hmm. it was during a time where we were doing such um, very difficult pivotal work in the in yeah. the studio and yeah. very emotionally driven and whatnot and the writing was great and and you know um, everybody put a lot of hard work into it but then after we'd, we'd go out and into the world which you don't really get a chance to do a lot of the time yeah. to go out and talk to people about the storyline oh, right. and, mm-hmm. and and um, you know cross over in, in that regard so it yeah. was a, it was a really um, it, was, it was a lot of hard work um, and a very sensitive subject but it was a it was a uh, a very a very cool time yeah. for the show and for me personally as an actor to be a part of that wow and what what was it like working with Nadia? Because I every time I, I think of Nadia and her character Chloe, I just go back to Ghoul Girl <laughs> and how they how they tried to make her look like she wasn't going to be this attractive girl, yeah. and then suddenly she's she one was, of the most beautiful women oh, on the yeah. face of the planet. And I was There's like, no well, duh, right, yeah. yeah, right. She, uh, I miss her. Um, we had such a. Yeah, it's been a long time, but it, we had such an amazing time yeah. working on that show together. They really, um, and I'm so grateful for this, they really put a lot of uh, time and attention into our story. Mm-hmm. I, and we uh, we had no idea that it was going to blow up the way it did. Yeah. Um, I, I guess it, um, 
dare I say, it was kind of lightning in a bottle in a way. Mm -hmm. You know, we were we were very young, mm -hmm. um, and uh, just kind of showing up and, and doing our job and and doing the best we could. We but again, we had no idea that it would become so. People were so crazy about it. The yeah. fans were, you know, we were like on every week where we were on the cover of Soap Opera Digest and doing like crossover interviews with like Entertainment Weekly and like mm -hmm. mainstream mm -hmm. press because it was so big and, yeah, and yeah. what have you. And, you know, we just, we were great friends. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she was another one of those people when I came on the show that was just very kind and sweet because she had been there not very long, but at least a year or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, and we knew that we were going to be working together and involved in this. and. The thing I loved about that story with her was the fact that they took their time with it. It's mm -hmm. it's not it's not good or bad, but the way it is now compared right. to them. But but you know a lot of storylines really kind of you got a short arc. You know yes. you, you, they, right. you know two people are introduced and they fall in love and they you know they do the fans like them or not. If they don't, we're going to kill it. If you know if they do, we'll keep it uh, keep it going a little bit longer. Right. But back then, I mean, I think it. Chloe and Brady started out, I think it, it took a year and a half before they even kissed. Yeah. It was like two years before they even made love to each yeah. other. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it had the, the the viewers and the fans, and I'm not just saying this, I know this from talking with fans and, and doing promotional appearances all over the country and talking to these people. People were just like salivating. Mm -hmm. And and like when is this going to happen? Right. Yeah, like right, you know, right. they had so many right. scenes where we were together in a room and and this close and like, <laughs> is it going to happen today? Yeah, yeah. No. Like you, you, you know? lean in and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that they had a they had a, a magazine cover with this, a picture of me and her and it simply just said like they finally kissed or something like <laughs> that <laughs> because it was such a big deal. Yeah. And then you know when we finally when Chloe and Brady like finally made love on the show like it blew the roof off the, yeah. the show. I mean, it was it was. Great. Great. It really, really was. But because she, basically, you were you know, your uncle Philip yeah. was with her. But that's the other thing too is that you know Jay Johnson who was playing Philip at the time. Yeah. Everything just everything just clicked. <laughs> it, it, it was did. one of those things where. It, it was the, the the peg was round going into the round hole. There's no square peg trying to just this storyline's got to work. Right, you know right. what I mean? It was yeah. like it just worked. It and work. everybody just brought it and the writing was so good and, mm -hmm. and and Jay and Nadia and I really worked well together. And, yeah. and um, so we had that that love triangle that, yeah. that really worked. And then you had what were they called? The Broies and the Flowies, you know, for yes, 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 yes. Chloe, yes. Yeah, Brady and Chloe and it was you know, people were sending literally bales of hay to the studio <laughs> because that's where like Philip and Chloe like made uh, love with like, yeah. Stable, yeah. mm -hmm. and then you know they were sending. I forgot the, what they sent for 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 Brady and Chloe for Nadia and me, but just the most bizarre things they were sending to the studio, and and they were so passionate about it. Yeah, and it was. Um, it was, yeah. it was nuts. Also, you and Philip had your own relationship too, because yeah, you, you guys were pretty kind of close. Also, as, we were, yeah. As, I mean, you know, Phil, I always called him Uncle Phil because he is your uncle, but you always yeah. said that to kind of get on his nerves. It seemed like yeah, he was. So we yeah we were blood related, yes. but also like rivals on the yeah. show, mm -hmm. um, which was really really great. Um, yeah, it was. It again, everything. It was one of those things where everything just worked, and it, you don't realize it at the time. And again, you show up to work and and you do your job and you do it to the best of your ability, and 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 then it gets good fan reaction. You realize, wow, we got something here. I look back on that, and I'm like, oh my goodness, that, that was just that was it was it was really big, and it, it was it, you know it was wonderful to be a part of that. I was yeah. very grateful for that. Now you also got to be on Friends. Because yeah. Joey was yeah. also on yeah. storylines on Friends, yeah. and that, you were on you were on that two thousand three. Yeah, that was that was amazing. Yeah, two thousand three was a good year. Yeah, really, um, right. Yeah, that that uh, that so, was amazing. Yeah. I played uh, Joey because Joey Tribbiani was yes. was um, played Doctor, by Matt LeBlanc, was yeah. Doctor Drake Ramore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> love that name. That day, um, and he was on Days of Our Lives, and I yes. played his friend on yeah. the show. Yeah. Uh, he was host, uh, like hosting a party, and the premise of the show is that um, you know Rachel, Jennifer Aniston, and Monica. Um, Courtney Cox. Yeah. Uh, we're like huge Days fans, and yeah. like Joey didn't want to tell them at the party. He was having a party with the day, you know, with like his friend Kyle Lauder, like coming over to the party. <laughs> and, um, you know, it was cool. Like the first line, walk in through the door, and my entrance in Courtney Cox is like, oh my God, it's Kyle Lauder. And I remember in rehearsal, that was like such a surreal experience because I was such a huge Friends fan. I mean, yeah, yeah. wasn't. Yeah. Right. You know, and, and I remember I was on I was on the set at Warner Brothers, and, and, um, Right next to the 
a sound stage where they shot like Casablanca, which is one of my all-time favorite okay, movies. Yeah. So I was having like an outer body experience already. <laughs> and then I walk into the friend set and you see like the Central Perk Cafe and like their apartment, and you're just like, you're like, what is what the trip? hell is going on? <laughs> the the colliding like, what days is my life? Colliding, you know, yeah. it, was, it was so cool. But then I walk and I, we're in rehearsal and I walk out and Courtney Cox is like, oh my god, it's Kyle Lauder. I was like, oh my god, it's Courtney Cox. <laughs> <laughs> and you're Jennifer and you're David Schwimmer and you're Matt LeBlanc and you're Lisa you can't Kudrow. say that obviously and I was yeah, like, like I can't do that I'm going home that would have been a perfect like yeah. gag reel take yes. if oh, you yeah, like totally. were yeah. able to walk in and you're do that if I was more comfortable I probably, yeah. probably would have done that Cox. you're Courtney Cox no it was, it was so cool and to, to, to do that show I mean they have a live studio audience it's, right. it's yeah. like theater on television it's, yeah. it's really really cool but that was you know that was amazing I still get stopped on the street for that oh that's amazing it's really really cool and then it shows up every once in a while on on TV and what have you. Did to relive that moment. Mm. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was really, really... And not to mention, I left that... I, I already liked Jennifer Aniston a lot. I left there, you know, <laughs> saying, I want to spend the rest of my life <laughs> <laughs> to this day. No, she was... Yeah. I mean, they were so... I'm not just saying this, really. It's not another actor thing. But every single one of those people were so Relax. cool. And I think it's because they, they started that... Together mm-hmm. and and all throughout the run. I mean, I came in in like season eight or yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, season yeah. eight or nine, where it had been running for almost they a decade, and, yeah, and they, had they had were not. They were still like the kids that showed up on day one, and yeah. that was so awesome. That's weird. I mean, they all came. I was so nervous. I just was standing there at craft services table, just kind of you know, just like <laughs> <laughs> not wanting to just ruffle any feathers and. Individually, like a couple in a group, but individually, every single one came up to me and introduced themselves to me. I didn't have to do that. Yeah. You know? and so yeah. it was just um, really, really cool. It's that moment where you're like, I know who you are. <laughs> I'm just going, exactly. like, yeah, I can't stand out right now. She was like, Hi, I'm Jen. I was like, I know. I know. Yeah. I'm like, hello. I'm Kyle. And, I, and I know your dad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I work with your dad. He's my grandfather. Actually, thank you. We did talk about that. We oh, did? That, oh, okay. That was, oh, okay. My, that was my in to have a conversation. Oh, with yeah. Oh, with your dad. We're, we were standing. It was, we were like, uh, it was like we're on a five, in a five minute break, yeah. as we call it. We're on a five. <laughs> and, and, and if some people are doing their thing, I was standing at the at the bar set with her, like on the set, and, and uh, I was like, so you know, I'm um, you know, I'm, I'm your your father's grandson <laughs> on days, and uh, and so I, you know, I just kind of weaned. She did. So we ended up okay. talking about oh, that good. for a while. Oh, okay, so good. That was great. Yeah. Those are pretty close. Yeah. Know, and it was awesome. It was just surreal because the whole time she kept saying, you know, like, oh, my husband Brad. I was like, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Tough. Who's that? Who's that again? Brad, Brad who? who? Brad? Brad? Brad who? No. Oh, Pitt. Pitt. Oh, yeah. that guy. Well, that, no. You know, that's not familiar cool, with know, him. That's the cool thing about this business is is that you just you're a fan. Of, yeah. Of you work in this business, but you're a fan of other actors and of other shows or whatnot, and then you finally get a chance to to work with them and and be on a show that you're a fan of and work with people that you're a fan of, and and I don't know. I just I personally don't take it for granted. Yeah. You know, it's it's I don't just say I'm an actor too, so <laughs> we're all in the same boat. No, you're not. I I. I love you guys and respect you. We feel you. the same way. Yeah, we feel the same way as yeah, homes. We get to meet you guys. That was yeah. the first time that that really happened to me, where I was like, I don't care where I go in this business. I'm always going to feel this way. Yeah. So it was cool. Um, speaking of fans, we yes. have a question from our chat role. Yeah. And Jess J asks, "What's your favorite or funniest behind the scenes moment from Days?" Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm sure there's probably yeah, quite that, a few stories. That's what that's my brain is going is going <laughs> nuts right now because there are so many. We you know we had so much. There were so many pranks okay. that were played on that. Okay, the, the the one that comes to mind is um, I was I, I had been there for a little bit, but I was still kind of new. Yeah. So I was still very um, you know, you know, on set early. You know, the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, Drake. I don't know if anybody knows what this is, but you ever hear of when somebody pennies you into a door? That means you wedge pennies into your door to basically you can't open your door. Oh my god! Never heard that before. And Drake, Drake, basically he pennied my door and locked me into my dressing room. Yeah. Um, And when they called me to set, I just nonchalantly went to open it, and I'm just like. <laughs> and then it's one of those things where they're like, you know, they're like, Kyle Louder to set, you know, and then, you know, a couple of 30 seconds go by or whatever, maybe a minute, and they're like, Kyle, and I'm, <laughs> and, and he, I'm downstairs, I don't want to scream in the microphone, but I was just like, I'm in my room! <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I can't 
yeah, 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 yeah. The ceilings are like, I forgot who was my, na- my neighbor, my next door, my dressing room neighbor yeah. was next door, but like you could remove the ceiling panels, and I was like, knocked them out, and I was just like, hey, can you, but you can't open it from either side. You have to get like a screwdriver and a hammer oh, and like knock them out. So oh, I, I was like screaming at the top of my lungs, like, I'm not. It's, it suddenly sounds like a, like a real like days of our lives. Yes. Like, but I finally got out to set, and it was one of those oh, moments, because I don't, I don't know who did it, you know, but but so I, so I didn't walk out, and I wasn't comfortable enough to be like, who did it? Yeah. But I remember like walking out, and everybody's just kind of, you know, got those <laughs> smirk on and whatnot. <laughs> and then I didn't say anything. I was just kind of, I had a problem with my dressing room door, you yeah. know. And Drake finally was just like, you okay? And I was like, I knew it. And we, and, you know, we, we, were, we, were very, we were very close at that point yeah, in yeah. time. So I was like, Drake, you can't do this. <laughs> so I was trying to make an impression here. So that, 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 that's one of many. I yeah. mean, that is that is really one of many. But that was the, that happened early on, and that, that was kind of the first one that came to mind. Did you ever have a, a interesting, crazy... Fan moment, mm-hmm. like because I know that you mentioned you well, guys yeah. like went out and about. <laughs> He's like, yeah. He's like, yeah. What's your what's 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 that moment? I, I, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I I I've I, I kind of run the gamut with with um those moments, but on the scale of like really cool and fun all the way up to. A little scary, you know what I mean? Um, and you know, I don't, do, I don't judge. You know, I, I, I. Some people just get really intense. passionate, yeah. passionate, and, and intense about their about their show and their char- their favorite yeah. character yes. and, and whatnot. And they have maybe a difficult. I'm going to be very nebulous with this answer. <laughs> to not ruffle any feathers, yes. but, yes. but the point is, is that sometimes you know there were a couple experiences where. Um, People have a, a difficult time differentiating between the, the fact that I'm just, you know, an actor on a show making a living and I play a character and, and mm-hmm. um, I'm not this person who is mean to this other person yeah. and I'm not really trying to ruin their life. <laughs> You're and, not. And, sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah, and, it's, yeah. and, and so some you, you see people on the street or you, you'll meet somebody or you're at a personal appearance or a fan event or something like that. Mm. And somebody will have to kindly be escorted, you know, out the door by security, wow. you know. But it's um, it, look that that is the worst part of, of yes, things. Okay, of we'll, we'll leave that there. But it, I've had so many. I'm so grateful, you know, for the you know responses that I've gotten over the years from from great storylines and playing great characters and just mm-hmm. having great writing, yeah. um, you know, to 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 play out and. Um, I think I think I'll, let me talk about the the, the most life changing experience Ooh, of mine. Yeah, in terms do. of a fan situation, I do have to mention this because it just kind of popped into my head. And this this is kind of I don't mean to get all deep and dramatic oh. about it, but <laughs> but it's true. It's, it's it it really it was the first time. It was a very cathartic moment for me. It was the first time that I realized what we do really really has an impact on mm-hmm. people. And and a Make a Wish Foundation is a, a foundation and an organization that I've worked with over the years. And and um, you know there was um, I, I went into a into a hospital. Hospital. And uh, there was a there was a girl in there who had a terminal illness, and it was one of those things that. The long story short is that she, you know, she told me that that you know she doesn't get to leave the bed, she doesn't you know get to you know to really do much. Yeah. Um, but her, she looked forward every single day to one o'clock. You know, and when, when Days of Our Lives came on, and mm-hmm. it was happened to be a time where I was. Um, helping you know Chloe through her you know leukemia oh, cancer yeah. storyline, and it just really affected her. And she just told me she really looked forward every single day. That was like her one time where she can kind of escape into this world and and whatnot. And it just really because sometimes you can just you can just get caught up with with going to work and and yeah. like I said doing your job and doing the best you can yeah. and going home and and whatnot. And I don't want to say you forget about it, but sometimes it just doesn't come to the front of your mind that what you do really has an impact on people. Mm-hmm. And um, that was a moment that changed my life. That that what we do is 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 we can really make a difference in yeah. people's lives. Um, so I, I hate to get all deep on no, it, no, no, but, no, no, it was, but I, I just that reminded me that yeah. um, again I've had wonderful expan- fan experiences over the years. You know from you know from <laughs> both sides of the spectrum yeah. and all the way yeah. in between. Great well, story. I want to take you back uh, to yes. to many years ago, <laughs> where I actually met you for the second time in yes. my home city of Columbia, South Carolina, and I actually have a picture of it. Um, not the best picture of me. Oh my god! <laughs> but this was the second time I met you, um, and you were with Ari. 
okay, um, yeah. who plays Nicole now. Yeah. And um, I remember this was like Guys. one of two stops. Like you guys went to this theater and did like did a Q&A Q &A and, and everything. And then we went then, to the mall, right? And, yeah, and, and did an autograph, autograph session. Thing. Yeah. Well, because I was such a fan, um, <laughs> I would always take pictures with like the cast and then I would go and have the picture developed. I would put it in a frame oh. and then hand it to them. Oh. So I did that for you and Ari back then, but I also autographed the back of it because, you know, that was just a little, that was like the little superstar in me. Um, but yeah, but I totally remember that. And I used to be really nervous to like, God, was I that you young? Guys. Yeah, Jeez. you were. You was I great. ever that skinny? You both look great. I was, I was thin then. Good you lord. Look, you yeah. look great. That's the great. problem with the internet and YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and personal cameras. And Google images. <laughs> and really I stay and, away from that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> that's back when, you know, it was 35 millimeter cameras. I had oh to my God. I was going to say, I had hour. my picture developed. Yeah, yeah you said yeah. you just say yeah. developed. Just say did. developed. That's what right. was I saying earlier that I, I got a call from Fran Bascom again. God rest her soul was yeah. the casting director of Days when I was hired, and no, I was telling you earlier that when I got a call that that you know I was going to go in and, and meet with her that I didn't get a call. I got a, a, a page. page. Hey, <laughs> Motorola. That's right. Remember that? You're like, yes. you're like, bzz, you're like, like okay. okay. And then you had the call back and go, "Hi, this is Kyle. Who's hey, you're like, yes. hey, you page me." Yes, you gotta, uh, find, you gotta find a phone for sometimes and then call back. Oh yes. my god! Or how people were very creative and they used to like page you hello. Or oh like, yeah, I love you. Oh, one four yeah. three. One four yeah. three. <laughs> That's you. Anybody under the age of 90 is not going to yes, remember what that exactly, is. Exactly, exactly. Oh, People I love it. Now they're like, what's a pager? Oh, my, my high school girlfriend at the time, that's all we did. Right. So so pager. Because I wasn't allowed to have a pager. My parents wouldn't let me. Oh, so, really? so um, sorry, Mom and Dad. I know, so just like, I'm you. a parent now, too. I guess. <laughs> no, but I remember I, I saved up my money, and, and I went out, and I, and I, you know, and I got one. And then I, you know, had the plan, you know, mailed to, you know, their house. But yes. I was going to, like, check the mail every day. <laughs> of course. <laughs> See that. Anyway, the point is, yeah, 143 to my yep, high school. I do remember that. I do remember that. <laughs> <laughs> now, we do have another question yes. from our uh, fan in the chat room, Daquan. Who, oh, Daquan. Who's a, a, a fan of ours. Yes. Oh, cool. He, he's yes. always um, tuning in to Edition Days every Sunday at 5 p.m. right here. <laughs> Uh, but plug, he wanted plug. to know, have you ever met Eric Martzoff, who now oh, plays? Yeah. Eric Black. is a dear friend of mine. Oh. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I remember when he got, when he was hired yeah. you know, to do the role, we talked about it. Yeah. Um, Eric and I are like the same person. Yeah. <laughs> we really are. I mean, it's just <laughs> both sing and, and um, have a musical theater oh, yeah, you know, is. aspect of our of our lives and our careers. And... and um, <laughs> I, I honestly couldn't think of a better guy to be doing the role. And let, let's be honest, with you, that, that that man has taken this role and ran with it. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. Won an Emmy. I mean, hats off to you, bro. Yeah. I mean, you really. Look, I played young Brady. You know, I played yeah. him when he was, you know, from like 19 to 26. And then Eric plays Brady the man. And he yeah. and he knocks it out of the park. He yeah. kills it. But, yeah, Eric and I have known each other forever. I mean, I met, I met Eric. He's on Passers. The first time I met him at a party. <laughs> at for like it was an N NBC upfront party yes. when we were getting ready yes. to introduce the new shows back in 2003, another 2003. Yeah, good year. It was your year, yeah. big year. Um, <laughs> met Eric Martz off in 2003. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I met him at a party. He had just been hired to play the. He was a recast as Ethan. Yes, Ethan. On yes, Passions, on Passions, and, yeah. and he was there at that party, and we are, like we were in groups and introduced himself as a new Ethan on Passions, and yeah. and uh, yeah, so that was what 12, 12 years That's ago, like, right? Am yeah. I math right? Um, and we've known each other ever since. Seen yeah. each other a million times. We hang out together. He taught me how to play craps. What? He's an amazing craps player. Um, he is. <laughs> wow. Amazing oh, yeah. guy. I yeah. really, really. I haven't. I really haven't had a chance to hang out with him much. Yeah. Uh, we ran into each other recently, about a month ago, and I said, "You still same? You know, you're like still same number? Yeah. You? Yeah. He's like, let's let's get together. But yeah. you know." We'll, we'll we'll figure that out. Yeah, but yeah I, I, I've known him and, and love him. He's great. Wow. Yeah. Now you were on days for for six years. Yep. What was there a reason why you left, or did you have the choice to leave, or yeah, it what, was, what was that transition? You know, it, it was there. There was kind of a, a changing. It was a, a changing of the situation here. Mm -hmm. um, like Jim Riley had come on mm -hmm. in the fall. I believe. Mm -hmm. Forgive me if I'm wrong about this, but my brain is is trying to remember. It's okay. In the comment section, they'll let us know. Yeah, yeah don't tell us. Some, some yes, days exactly. fans are like, no, yeah. no. Um, <laughs> anyway, the point is, Jim came on and kind of had a bible for the for for the next couple of years or whatever mm -hmm. of what he wanted to do, and 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 um, 
his thing was was you know my contract and Nadia's contracts were were kind of up at the same time, mm-hmm. and I had been leading up to that to that. Um, you know, like the year before, you know, I was kind of figuring out, okay, I've been here, you know, what do I want to do? There was, you know, I was 26 mm-hmm. at the time. So there were, you know, I was kind of saying, you know, I, I want to do some other things in my career and some some other projects. And and anyway, the long story short, not to get talk business, at the end of the day, I remember I had a meeting with Ken, and he was kind of picking my brain about what was going on, and, mm-hmm. and, uh, and I was picking his, and, and ultimately I was like, you know, I'm thinking about maybe, you know, doing some other things at the end of the contract. And he's like, we'll, we'll talk to Jim, see where his, you know, what he's written for the next couple of years or whatnot. And uh, ultimately, the the decision was, was um, you know, Brady and Chloe are going to finally culminate their big relationship into that we're going to have, like, a wedding to end all weddings. And, mm-hmm. and then you guys will ride off into the sunset. And yeah. I think that, you know, it worked out for me in terms of me wanting to... I'm trying to think of a better phrase and spread my wings. <laughs> right. <laughs> but just, you know, but, you know, I, just again, I, I was on the show from 19 to 26, mm-hmm. and, yeah. and I, I was ready to do something else. And mm-hmm. I think that the show found a great, you know, um, logistically with contracts coming up and storyline. I think everything just kind of made sense that yeah. you know we were good. You know, that was a, a time for us to you yeah. know to kind of to kind of go. Yeah, it's natural as an actor to want to do something else. Yeah, yeah it, it it has nothing to do with right. with being uh, ungrateful or, or like I'm over this. It, right. it's, it, it's just kind of you're like. Okay, I've been here. I've been doing this. It's great. And again, I was 26, mm-hmm. and I was like, "What else? What else am I capable of?" You right. know, uh, in this, and it's, and that's just what it comes down to. It's a creativity thing. You know, it's why actors in any, any aspect or any genre of this business get to a point where they're like, "Okay, you know, what's what's next to kind of challenge me um, coming up?" So it was, it was a little bit of everything. You know, was there anybody on the show you wish you could have worked with, storyline wise? I think I worked with everybody. I think you did too, actually, yeah. at that point. I think you did. No, I'm, I'm thinking out loud. Um, because where do you got around? You I worked around. with everybody. <laughs> you know what? I didn't work with Stefano. I didn't. Oh. Um, that's my answer. Because um, I worked with, with Pe- uh, Teo Penglis. Yeah. Um, yeah. Pe- Tony. Tony. Mm-hmm. Um, which was cool. I wanted to work with, with, um, with Stefano. Um, uh, Joe Muscolo, obviously. Yeah, of course, but just yeah. Because, like, I. The, it, John Black, my father, Brady mm-hmm. Black's father, had such a history yes. with Stefano, oh, and yeah. and in my research and reading about this this massive history with, yeah. with John and Stefano, um, I thought it was cool. I wanted it to. It would be cool if, if like the the next generation, John Black's son, kind of got involved with with the Phoenix, yeah, as he yes. was called. Yeah. But I, I, I kind of got that with with Teo. So yeah. the storyline happened, mm-hmm. but it wasn't with with Joe. Right? Yeah. So. Right. But realistically, I, I I think that he was the only actor that I did not work with That's so funny. <laughs> on that yeah. show. I worked with everyone, which yeah. is uh, yeah. Brady got around, which was really really yeah. cool. Yeah, uh, Daquan wanted to know uh, what was it like working with Allison Sweeney. Oh, another one who's yeah. who's great. I mean, she she was. Um, was and still is obviously just such a pro. Um, yeah. She was one of the people that I learned from because she had been there for for a while. You know yeah. when I when I got there, um, she played my sister. You know half sister right. right yeah. on the show. So we had a lot of really fun scenes. Yeah. Um, when I first got on that show, um, Brady was mad at the world. Yes, you were. So <laughs> scenes that I'd have with people were very emotionally charged, mm-hmm. and we had some. Uh, some scenes where we were at each other's throats, which was really, really fun. Because it's one of those moments you can just go at somebody and then right. they, they yell cut and you're just like, you okay? Yeah. Good. You okay? <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, no, but it was, it was it, yeah, she, she's amazing. Yeah. And then from days you went over to Bold and the Beautiful. Bold and Beautiful, yes, you yeah. did. Um, and you were there for five years? Five. five. It all kind of mumbles. So yeah. 2007 to, it was to like 11 or 12. Like four and change. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. Yeah, that was, um, I, mean, I was Rick telling Forster. you guys earlier that uh, that that was kind of a bucket list item for me um, to work for for Brad Bell and the Bell family, mm-hmm. legendary TV family, yes, yeah, and yes. um, and then the legendary actors on that, the originals, John Su- McCook and Susan, Susan Flannery, Flannery Kelly, Ron Kelly, Boston, Captain Kelly, Lane, Lane, yes. um, Hunter Tylo, uh, yes. even. I mean, it was. Um, I'll spare you the details again because we don't have all day. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, I got a, my my uh, agent called me. He got a, a phone call from um, from Brad Bell or Brad Bell's people. Mm-hmm. What can we say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Called people. <laughs> people. Called people. Called people. people. Yes. This um, time, not via one, pager. <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> on myself, but it was a flip phone oh. because it was 2006. <laughs> flip phones are fine. That's why. Yeah. Right. 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 Right.
you flip it over one hand, you right. roll. Like, you're like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, so but Brett got a call and Brad wanted to to meet with me in his office, so um, which was really cool for me. So I went over to CBS TV City and um, which is a legendary studio. Yes. Um, yes. And went up to Brad's office and and met with him and and again he wouldn't. We were saying this earlier. He wouldn't tell me who the character was. He just wanted to pick my brain about what I was doing and w- what I have interest in maybe coming over to the show and mm-hmm. and then talk to me about where the show was at and the storylines that they were telling and who I would probably work with when if I was there and <laughs> I didn't find out till after I was he hired me that that I would be playing Rick Forster yeah. uh, which again was great because you're talking about you know Catherine Kelly Lang's oh, son yeah. John yes. McCook's son yes. Yes. working with everybody yes. on that show mm-hmm. a, an iconic character on that show um, mm-hmm. I was so thrilled to death and yeah. that 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 time on that show really kind of changed my career in, in many aspects. Yeah. It, it kind of set me on on a different, not a different, but but a new trajectory yeah. um, because of the international aspect yes. Yes. of that show. For those of you who don't know, um, Bone and Beautiful is kind of sold as a nighttime soap overseas, so they have a huge international it's, audience. It's, mm-hmm. it's in the Guinness Book of World I don't know if it still is. Yeah. I don't want to get my facts wrong, but at the time when I was there, it was in the Guinness Book of World Records as the most watched daily drama in the world. It's like wow. 100 million people in like 100 countries or something like that. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, whole new experience. Exposure. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. The, the, I, I was all of a sudden, you know, getting, you know, I was going to the Monte Carlo TV Festival. And I, <laughs> that show probably shot on location in Sydney, Australia. And then I was I was in Scandinavia and France and, and again, Monte Carlo and and uh, Italy. It's yeah. huge in Italy. It's huge in Italy. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, I, got, I got to see the world and travel the world and work all over the world because of that show. Have you seen yourself dubbed in other languages? Yes, and it's the trippiest <laughs> Trip- experience. <laughs> we, uh, we actually have a fan uh, calling oh. in now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Put on your... Headphones here. Hello, fan. You are Hello. on AfterBuzz TV Spotlight On with Mr. Cal Louder. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hi, it's Ashley calling from Toronto, Canada. Hello, Ashley. Hello, How Ashley. are you? Hi, Ashley. I'm good. How are you? Doing great. You are on live with Kyle. Do you have a question for him? I do. Hi, Kyle. Hi, honey. How um, are you? There, is there any scene that you wish you could have gone back and redone it? Or a scene that you really was one of your least favorite scenes to do on tape. God, that's a great question. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know what? You know what comes to mind. Actually, uh, my gut reaction to this is maybe not necessarily a scene, but just kind of um, the way I played Rick on the Bold and the Beautiful. There was a. There's a, when you're playing when you're playing a, a, a character who's not necessarily evil, but just maybe kind of stirring up a lot of trouble mm-hmm. on a show. You walk a very fine line between you, you want to you want you don't want people to hate you yeah. to the point where they don't they can't stand mm-hmm. watching you, mm-hmm. but but you want them to love to hate you. Yeah, and I think that that. Um, you know, there, there were some times in playing that that character that uh, not all the time, but but I there in my humble opinion, personal opinion, I, I think that there were some times where I crossed that line to to where he became just a little unredeemable in, mm-hmm. in some parts, and people were, you know, uh, kind of like, can he can he ever come back for the, from this sort of thing? So, yeah. um, and 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 he, and he did, and I and I was able to kind of salvage it, but <laughs> but, but there were some times where I would watch an air show and go like, oh no. <laughs> Oh God! You know, and, and some of the, you know, but um, yeah, th- there was definitely that 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 comes to mind. But I think that it, that happens a lot when in this business. You know, yeah. you you have an interpretation of what you want to do in a scene and with a mm-hmm. character, and it just seems very right at the time. And sometimes you're in the middle, you're in the heat of the moment, shooting a scene or whatnot, and and something just comes out of you. You feel something in the moment, yeah. and then you know you watch the you know the air show like a month later or whatever, and you sit on the couch and you're like. <gasps> <laughs> you, you, and you're like, oh no, that's not what I wanted to do. And you, you, you feel like calling your boss and being like, sorry, you know, I'll make this up to you somehow. Or they call you. Yeah. So. And they're like, Kyle. And I'm just like, I know. I know. We're going to, we're going to, I need to do it over. Yeah. We're going to do it again. So, um, but that, that was a great question. Thank you yeah. for that. Thank you, Ashley, for, for always calling in and supporting us. And hopefully you will be tuning in this Sunday at 5 p.m. for our full recap of that's Days of right. Our Lives. That's right. You there? Ashley? She's not. Oh, okay. Okay. oh Thanks, well, she's gone. All right. So um, thank you again, Ashley. Um, but the other great thing about Bold and the Beautiful was that they wrote in your singing ability. Yes. And you were able to <coughs> sing well, on the show that's, as well, um, right? that, That's kind of... 
That's what I was talking about in terms of, of yeah. getting me new opportunities in, in this business because I um I, I had an opportunity to sing at, on that show mm -hmm. a lot actually, which was great. When I, kind of when I first started, and at the end it was in the last year of my. Um, contract because in Italy um, it's the, the show's delayed like yeah. a couple of years or whatnot. Yeah. But um, in my last year on on that show, I was contacted by uh, an Italian composer who had a whole library of, of original music that he had written, and he was like looking for a singer to to sing mm -hmm. um, his music. So I was contacted by him, and he said, you know, I, I have this music. I would love to do an album, and I'd love you to to sing my music. Mm -hmm. And I and you know I I um, I got. You know, in touch with him through our mutual representatives, and and I said, look, send me your send me your demo. I'd love to listen to it, yeah. and it was great. I loved his music. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of up my right up my alley in that in that regard. It was kind of like classical crossover type thing. Um, but the long and the short of it is, I I, I recorded the album in Florence, and wow. um, we released it on iTunes, and it like shot to the top of the charts internationally. Yes, it did. Which yeah. was amazing. It did. Yeah. Eleven. Um, yes, it did. Which was uh, unbelievable. Um, it, you know to. to to be like big in Europe was like a cool thing, I guess, <laughs> to say. Um, but no, it was awesome, and and it, I, I subsequently did um, some promotion for it, like um, in Milan and Rome, and. Um some performances in Tuscany. Uh, it was amazing, um, and I got to perform on the the uh, Italy's version of American Idol, oh, uh, which was okay. the videos on my website um, okay. right now. But um, anyway, it was it was uh, the bold and the beautiful really opened the floodgates f for that sort of thing, and it got me during that process. So like I, I finished on on B and B, and then that's when I went and had the time to travel and record the album, and then and then promote it mm -hmm. and everything. And it was during that time where I said, you know, I really miss. Singing, you yeah. know, it's it's um, something that I've done since I was I mean, my entire life. Actually, mm -hmm. um, well, realistically, I started training when I was classically training when I was thirteen or fourteen. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, so I talked to my 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 reps and I said, "Look, I'd love to incorporate you know music and singing a little bit more in, into the career." And mm -hmm. and uh, that's when I you know, Rock of Ages. Uh, yeah, and, okay, yes. and um, I actually auditioned for the Broadway company in mm -hmm. New York. I flew to New York and 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 read for the creative team over there, the director and producers, and and um, the again, it, it's kind of it's relevant. But uh, you know, instead of this is what I love about the show is they're so loyal to their actors, and yeah. and uh, so I I was auditioning for the role of Stacy Jacks, who the it's the Tom Cruise role yes, from yeah, the movie, yes, yeah. and. Um, so, but the, the guy who was understudying that role for a long time, they wanted to promote him to the lead role on Broadway, which I applaud. Yeah, yeah so that's amazing. Yeah. They put in their time and their work yeah, by yeah. means do that. They deserve it. Yeah. But everything happens for a reason because they said, "Well, look, we're opening the show in in Las Vegas, and we'd love you to do it there. Mm -hmm. And it's closer to L.A. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't have to be across the country mm -hmm. from you know my daughter yeah. and yes. and um, you know my life in L.A. and, and yeah. whatnot. And and that year uh, in Las Vegas doing that show ended up being arguably one of the best years of my life, oh, okay. personally and professionally. The the people that I met um, there." changed my life in so many different ways and and it was doing that that musical which is a, just a rock show right. basically, basically yeah. Yeah, in yeah, basically. that venue you know singing 80s rock anthems <laughs> yes i do i love it which is my thing <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. um you know getting to sing wanted dead or alive by bon jovi which is oh yes your group again in front of thousands of people in that in a in a venue and like that in like a Amphitheater in mm -hmm. Las Vegas, uh, in a resort like the the Venetian mm -hmm. Palazzo, yeah. um, every single night was just the biggest rush. It really, really it was the closest yeah. I'll ever come to being a rock, rock star. star. <laughs> it was the best thing <laughs> ever. It really, really was. And just getting to know that city, a city that I had visited many, many times oh, sure. yeah. uh, since I moved to L.A. because it's so close. Right. Yeah. But always just was a tourist and kind of just hung out on the strip. But th th that city has so much to offer. It does actually. Really? It does. Oh my god! I, th I thought it was just see. I, you know, my, my girlfriend I, I and I would go. Was Hiking in, yeah. in, in uh, Red Rock Canyon. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's schools. There's grocery <laughs> store. I mean, people, people really don't know that. It's a whole like. There's schools. There's things yeah. there. Like I said, I mean, I was talking about people, people, it's people, it's people actually live there who don't even work on the street. Oh, they don't and, work and in. And when yeah. they find out you're like a local, you yeah. are like red carpet treatment. You're gold. <laughs> you're gold. <laughs> because yeah. it's such a tourist city. But yeah. Yeah. no, that, that the city is amazing. I miss it. I really, really do. Every yeah. time it changed my life because I go back to that city now yeah. to. Um, you know, see my friends who are some of them are still in the show okay. and, and what have you. And I've, I met so many people there that um, 
you know, that are still there, that I yeah. enjoy going back and, oh, yeah. and seeing yeah. them. But the point is, is it used to be like, you know, go to Vegas, yeah. you know, let's tie one on. Party. Now it's like I fly into that city and I'm like, oh. Yeah, I'm home. I'm home. Exactly right. Um, yeah, so I, uh, amazing year. R- yeah. Really missed that that show and, and the people that I was involved with in that show. Now, if you could put yourself in a Broadway show, which show would you want to do? Oh, God. Because um, I have my list. Yeah, I was going to say there's, there's a do. list. I mean, I mean, Phantom and Family Opera, Jean mm-hmm. Valjean. And I can see you doing Family Opera. Yeah. I'm really That's young nice. right now for these. I'm kind of, well, I'm kind of getting up there. <laughs> <laughs> makeup. They can always do makeup or whatever. Yeah, the guy that the guy that's that's my favorite guy who who's ever played the Phantom yeah. and John, and, um, and Jean Valjean and, and Les Mis as a guy by the name of uh, Ramin Karimloo, who's doing. He's great. Actor. He's great ridiculous. singer. Great yeah. singer. In every way, he's a yes. musical theater I've guy. I've seen him several um, times. Yeah. He's my, he's my age. He's a little bit older than me. So I'm, older, again, yeah. it was always that thing where I was just like, I'm. I, so one day I'll be old enough to play this role. Now it's like I'm like. <laughs> I'm getting there. Wow, it's like, I better, yes. you know, I better <laughs> start auditioning. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, those are two bucket list roles for me. Uh, but there's another role, um, a musical that not many people know of. Um, maybe they do. Um, mm-hmm. It didn't last very long on Broadway, unfortunately. It was The Bridges of Madison County. Okay. Oh, um, okay, yeah. That soundtrack yeah. is unreal. Yeah, um, okay. I would love to just sing that music yeah. on stage every single night. The problem is the guy that originated the role, his name is Stephen Pasquale, mm-hmm. um, famous actor, actually, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. in television as well. Um, the problem is, is he, he sang that role so well. <laughs> it's done. That That's it. Done. I'll, I'll stick to just singing that role in my show. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> because people would like see me hypothetically like do it on stage yeah. and then like buy the soundtrack and then like, like go yeah. over and listen to it and be like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> this is so much better. <laughs> so, I'm like, so I'll probably just play that role in my dreams. But um, yeah, th- th- those two roles are probably. Yeah. Bef- and you're also working on something. Can you mention a little bit about that? I am. Yes. I do want to Speaking talk of about musicals. this. Speaking you know, of musicals. Speaking of musicals. Ken Corday, you know, the Days of Our Lives president, yes. CEO, and, Guru, and executive Guru, producer, Guru. Um, a dear friend of mine um, is uh, developing a musical, actually. And Ken, I will not talk too much about this, okay? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Don't worry, I'm not going to spill the beans. No. But uh, just, just to kind of throw it out there, um, mm-hmm. yeah, he approached me a couple months ago now. Um, and I kind of uh, fell out of touch with him a little bit, because again, I've been in Vegas mm-hmm. and in New York for, for a little bit. So, yeah. But I'd come back to L.A., and and uh, he contacted me and and it was great to catch up with him because he and I I've always been very grateful for our uh, relationship both professionally and personally like I was saying before we, we have a lot of the some things in common you know yeah. like golf and music and things and people don't know Ken is is a jack of all trades he's yeah. an unbelievable yeah. musician and songwriter he wow, just wrote a novel man. his second one I wow. think um, in, adu- in addition to being an executive producer for yeah. television Anyway, he, he went to his office and we sat down and, and was like, you know, I want to talk to you about I'm developing something and I want you to be involved with it. And again, I will not <laughs> yes. talk don't, too many details. Don't I don't know if you want to talk about Just a little let, teaser. Let's just say that he's written a lot of the music for it. Um, mm-hmm. It's in development mm-hmm. right now, but we I got to go into, we got to go into um, Capitol Records and Studio A, which is the legendary oh. Capitol yes, Records yes, studio. Yes. Yeah. With Judy Garland and Frank Sinatra and yeah. DMR and the Rat Pack. And yeah. Nat King Cole. I mean, the yeah. list goes on. Yeah, it goes on. Yeah. Those are just the classics. I mean, yeah. people still. Right. right. But we got to go in there for two full days with a full wow. band. Wow. Um, and we had like lead guitar, rhythm guitar, percussion, drums, steel guitar, horn section, bass, backup singers, every, the whole thing. And recorded 18 songs in two days, which was like being in, singing in a blender. It was just nuts. Yeah. But we, we recorded a concept album with this music. Mm-hmm. And. Um, but again, it's it's in development right now. But just just to to work with Ken on in in the on the music side of things yeah. now, yeah. after working with him, you know, on the television side of things, first of all, it was an honor and a privilege yeah. to mm-hmm. to spend that much time with him and work with him on that stuff. But um, it was just really cool to 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 get to see that kind of side of him. Yeah. 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 The musician and the songwriter, and um, he's just he's very gifted in that regard. And yeah. um, so, you know, stay tuned for that. It's yes. again, it's in exciting. development, but uh, we just yeah. recorded it like last week, so very it's exciting, um, yeah. 
Well, you'll have the full support of us and yes. all of the days of our lives. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah, I will exactly. keep you posted. So it's like that. a it's yeah. like a league of people. Yeah, let us know so yeah. that way we Again, can always. these things, it's like everything in this business. It, yeah. it's, it's 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 it's, it's in development. It's yeah. a, it's in the process. But, but we will yeah. promote whatever. Exactly. Speaking. We, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just gonna say we did like we ran some B roll yeah. in, oh, okay. in the studio when we were recording, so that I'll put out on social media. Okay. Yeah. So you'll you'll kind of see. Well, speaking of you know working so closely with Ken and him developing things, you may want to pass on this idea to him. Um, you know, there's been a running campaign here mm -hmm. at Edition Days called yes. Hashtag Maxine's Son. Yes. And um, if you're not familiar with Maxine, she's a very sassy nurse at Salem uh, mm -hmm. University, and she makes appearances throughout the show. I do know. Every now and then. Um, and I think, you know, and she can vouch too, uh, that I would be great to play her son if they ever wanted to expand her role and mine. Um, so, so Why are you looking at me? You well, should talk to, you know. Oh, no, they know. They know, they know. They're they out there knows already. They know. So, <laughs> We're telling you. You know, over a casual game yeah. of golf, you know, you can let Ken know that, that Tony over Just here. Just beat him over the head with it? Well, <laughs> well, then that that turns into a whole nother story. <laughs> well, actually, if he wants to incorporate himself, then, you know, I could come yeah. in and, like, bash him over the head, and then it's a whole, like, yes. thing, and he's yeah. at the hospital, and then I discover Maxine right. is, you know, my mom. Perfect. So just let him know there's some <laughs> there's some ideas that I could run, you know, yeah. by him he's in case he's he ever writes looking it. He for, write for scenes. Yes. I'll tell you, all I can promise is that I, I'll do what I can do. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, for that, I, I am very appreciative. Absolutely, my friend. <laughs> Definitely. Well, Kyle, thank you so much yes, for, for joining us today. Yes, We're starting to run out of time. I was going to say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but just keep, talk, just keep talking I for a while. I just keep talking until yes. you've been like, we got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cut it off. Cut it off. We'll, we'll be here all, all day. And I wouldn't mind. James wouldn't mind. No. Fans wouldn't mind. No. But I think AfterBuzz would mind yes. a, a little bit because they may have some other, other people who want to come in and no, talk listen. to. Uh, <laughs> this is, no, guys, all joking aside, this has been a blast. Oh, Good. Thank, thank you very you, much for having me. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you for coming it. in. Where can yeah. Um, yeah. fans find you? And um, I'm not a big social media guy. I, I have Twitter. I'm not on Facebook and mm -hmm. I'm not on Instagram to the to the dismay of my girlfriend who's mm -hmm. you know awesome on Instagram. Um, <laughs> And she's, you know, I, I can't really see the pictures that she posts. You need an Instagram. I, I, don't, I don't have an Instagram. Um, but I'm on Twitter. It's at Kyle Louder 22. Um, it's because somebody took at Kyle Louder. Really? Really? Me. So I can't wow. get the handle. Wow. Well, so, but there you go. You can, I, I post, I try to post on, on Twitter as much as I can. Yeah. Um, about my, my daily activities. <laughs> <laughs> Which are so exciting to people, I'm sure. And you have your website. And well. yeah, your website. Com yeah. exactly um, has info and photos and videos and whatever. Um, but uh, if, listen, if you ever, ever want to get, you know, if you question from me or get in contact with me, just just tweet at me. Yeah. I do I do check, you know, I mean, we all sit <laughs> right. in line doing yes, this. Yes, of course. I'm of not going to lie about yeah, it. I do, I do. I do too. Yeah, we so do. I, yeah. If you mention me, I, I, there's chances are we'll see it and if it's uh, I will do my best to get yeah. back good James where can they find you on like 20 after shows here in After Buzz. <laughs> uh, but besides that, I'm also at Black Hope LA, B L A K H O P E L A, on Twitter. And I'm on Facebook, James Lott Jr. And then there's also my radio show every Friday morning on adrenalineradio.com. Well, all right. And you can find me on all social media platforms at Loungy with Tony or my website, loungywithtony.com. And of course, you can find me and James, the Chocolate Twins, on Dish and Days <laughs> every Sunday, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, where we recap the full week of your favorite NBC. So, days of our lives. That's right. Once again, Kyle, thank you so much guys, for joining us today. My pleasure. Appreciate and it. And thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you this Sunday for another edition days. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Sit down. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The views expressed herein are those of the host only. Do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.